It's 4 p.m. on Thursday, April 24th here in Korea. Live from Seoul, I'm Moon Gon Young. It's been more than eight days since a nearly 7,000 ton Seoul ferry sank off Korea's southwestern coast with more than 470 people on board. More bodies are being retrieved from the sunken vessel, and the death toll continues to or currently stands at 171. And as the death toll rises, the number of missing declines. As of this Thursday afternoon, 131 remain unaccounted for. Now, although hope is fading that there may be additional survivors in the frigid waters, search and rescue operations continue this Thursday for that very 131 passengers who remain unaccounted for. Let's go straight to our Jim Gil. He has been covering this story for us from Pengmokong Harbor, 20 kilometers from the site of the ship capsize. Myungil, it's yet another day. Chances are they'll recover more bodies at this point. What can you tell us? That's right. We are now into the ninth day of search and rescue operations here at the Pengmokan Harbor. But not a single body has been found from the capsize ferry. The death toll currently stands at 171. Most of the bodies retrieved were students from Tanon High School. And the families of the missing camping out here at the Pengmokan Harbor are clinging to their last bits of hope, but they're growing restless. More and more families have been coming to the harbor lately with a rise in the death toll as they try to identify their children's bodies with their own eyes. Many parents are gathered around a list that describes the retrieved bodies, trying to match the descriptions with their own loved ones. Now, Myungil, as for the search and rescue operations, uh, I believe divers uh, are entering a new phase in the search. The rescue teams are trying to enter the center area of the fourth floor cabins at this hour. This is where most of the Tanon High School students were believed to be and all the missing passengers were. Over 130 people remain missing inside the sunken ship, and most of them are high school students. Today's rescue operations will be conducted with the biggest rescue team yet, with more than 700 rescue personnel, 261 rescue boats, and 35 aircraft. The rescue teams have been focusing their search on the third and fourth floors of the vessel. And so far, they said they have not found any air pockets. This greatly reduces the chances of finding survivors in the sunken ship. Myungil, but it seems like there are still messages of hope and support there on site. Yes, behind me are the yellow ribbons, praying for the safe return of all missing passengers. It's been more than a week since the tragedy happened, and messages of support for those still missing in the sunken ship were sent to Pengmokan Harbor from across the nation as well. The message is said, we love you all, and that miracles will happen. This has been Jim Gil reporting from Pengmokan Harbor. And the entire nation is with them on that. The parents of the missing are now into a ninth day of waiting for any news of their loved ones who are on board the ill-fated Sewolho ferry. The families have been huddled in an auditorium near the accident site in Chindo since day one, and our Huang Jihye joins us live from there. Jihye, what's it like there? <laughs> Konyong, the atmosphere here is still very tense as divers continue to pull out bodies from the sunken Sewolho ferry. The families are looking at a television screen showing a list of descriptions of what the newly discovered bodies look like. Earlier this week, the families asked authorities to wrap up rescue and search operations by today. With, and with the weather conditions expected to worsen from tomorrow, hopes are fading among families that the bodies of their loved ones will even be found. A father I talked to yesterday said he has given up hope for his daughter and he just wants someone to find her body so she can be laid to rest. There are now noticeably fewer families here at the Chindo Gymnasium as more bodies are being discovered and identified. The families are leaving to tend to their lost loved ones at Pengmokang Harbor and to the hospital. Those remaining here are going back and forth from the gymnasium to the harbor about twice a day. While the whole country is hopefully waiting for news of survivors along with the families here, hundreds of volunteer workers came to the Jindo Gymnasium to support the families and to encourage those 
who are desperately waiting for news on the ones they love. This has been Huang Jie reporting live from the Jindo Gymnasium. Now, a temporary group memorial altar has been set up in Ansan, which is the city most touched by this disaster. Thousands of citizens are visiting the site to say goodbye to the past. Our Kwantua is at the site, and she joins us live from the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall. So, uh, the atmosphere there um, must be incredibly somber. Yes, Kanyang, with the whole nation in grief for the victims of the Seolo ferry accident, thousands of mourners are coming here to the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall to say their goodbyes. Now, from the entrance of the hall, the line never seems to be ending as more and more people are constantly streaming in. Now, many are having trouble even standing in front of the over 60 pictures of the victims that are on display, and the sound of wailing by the mourners fills the Big Hall. As of now, well over 20,000 mourners have visited since yesterday. Students, teachers, and faculty members from Tanon High School have been among those paying respects. This group memorial is open 24 hours a day here in Ansan, except for certain times of the day for regular maintenance purposes. The memorial hall will be open throughout the weekend as well. The local government here has also set up message service uh, so that those who cannot come in person can send text messages of condolences. The messages that come through are being displayed on one of the screens here. Meanwhile, as more bodies recovered from the sunken Seolo ferry are being sent to the city of Ansan, local hospitals and funeral halls have been struggling to cope with the number of victims who are being sent here. Officials here in the city are working to expand facilities while securing funeral halls in nearby cities like Xiyeng and Anyang. Well, so uh, um, a very, uh, very grim sight there. But apart from the uh, families of the schoolmates of Tanun High School, uh, they must have the hardest time. But I hear some of them uh, have returned to school today. That's right, Kanyang. Uh, seniors, around 480 seniors from the Taunwan High School, have returned to their classes today. However, the classes were shortened and they focused on counseling and uh, therapy, both for the students and teachers. Teachers and experts will primarily progress with a therapy program to help the students recover from the mental shock and will gradually return to usual class schedules. Next Monday, April 28th, sophomores as well as juniors who weren't on the Seoul Ferry will also return to classes. Now, this has been Kwon Soa reporting live from the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall. And it's not just those of us here in Korea, but people all around the world have reached out to Korea in its time of need. Korean Americans have set up memorial altars throughout the United States expressing support for the victims and their families. Our Kim Hyun Bin reports. Overseas Koreans in Los Angeles set up a memorial altar in front of the Korean consulate, and it's been adorned with messages of hope and flowers. It is heartbreaking for the children. I've been keeping them in my prayers since the incident. Memorial altars have been set up across the world by Koreans living overseas. Those visiting a temporary altar in Washington, D.C. said they were at a loss for words about the tragedy and plan on holding a fundraiser for the victims' families. It's not just in Korea, but people in the U.S. as well are also crying for the lost ones. In Times Square in New York, more than 200 Koreans and foreigners attended a memorial ceremony to show support for Korea and all those here who are suffering from the devastating tragedy. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Let's now try getting a better sense of what must be going through the minds of those who survived, those who went through this traumatic experience, as well as the mental and psychological status of those affected by this disaster. For that, Dr. Andrew Cheng, professor at Academia Sinica, joins us live from Taipei, Taiwan. Dr. Andrew Cheng, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, the focus uh, so far has largely been on the accident itself and search and rescue operations, but 
But also critical are the uh, psychological status of those who survived this uh, tragic accident, I presume. Now, based on your medical expertise, uh, what are they going through and what really needs to be done? Yes, thank you. Uh, please let me first express my condolences to the victims and their families in this terrible ferry disasters. Regarding the survivors, there is a high risk of developing so-called post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and the depression. They may have intense fear, strong feelings of helplessness and hopelessness, recurrent bad dreams of the disaster, recurrent vivid, intrusive, and distressing recollections of the event, acting or feeling as if the event were recurring, they may make efforts to avoid any stimulus associated with the event, and there are frequently symptoms of poor sleep, irritability, outbursts of anger, difficulty in concentration, etc. So it is necessary to provide useful support for them to return to their previous normal daily lives and to arrange psychiatric assessment for them ASAP. The psychiatric intervention should try to relieve the survivor's guilty feeling and to provide psychiatric treatment for those suffering from PTSD and depression. Be, 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 be aware that there is a higher risk of suicidal ideation and suicide attempt among survivors suffering from PTSD and or depression, which should be assessed together with the need for suicide prevention. And I do hope tra tragic events like the suicide committed by a vice principal of senior high school can be prevented in the future. Meanwhile, people of younger age are at a higher risk for developing PTSD. Therefore, special attention should be paid to students among the survivors by school mental health personnel with psychiatric consultation when indicated. Right, right. Um, so those uh, survivors, as well as those who have been left behind, they both need a psychological and psychiatric help. Now, uh, Dr. Cheng, uh, there, the entire nation is mourning the loss of this tragic, tragic accident. And the general public here has been uh, following the news uh, day and night. Now, many are in disbelief, sadness, anger, and despair. Just briefly, what as a nation do we need to do to uh, overcome this experience and, and really move forward? I think the government and people of Korea, including the mental health professional, should do their best to offer social and psychological support, as I have described earlier, to the survivors, victim families, rescue workers, and friends, classmates of the victims who might have witnessed the disaster. I think a special professional team can be formed to run these tasks. Of course, what was happened, what has actually happened, should be thoroughly investigated and let the people know. That will be a precious lesson for the prevention of such man-made disaster in the future. All right, Dr. Andrew T. H. Chang, professor at Academia Sinica, an expert and specialist in psychiatric epidemiology. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. You're welcome. Meanwhile, police and prosecutors continue their joint investigation into the captain, crew, and owner and founder of the Marin com Mar Marine Company excuse me, that operate the Solo Ferry. For more details, let's go live to our UDN at the News Center. Uh, Lian, uh, what are we learning of late from that probe? Hi, Ganyang. 11 of the 15 crew members that were rescued from the ship have been charged with negligent homicide and violating maritime law. The prosecutors say the crew members did not carry out any rescue operation and hid in the steering room while they were waiting to be rescued by the Coast Guard. The charges carries a minimum of three years in prison. Now, a number of those crew members questioned by authorities have admitted that they did not try to rescue the passengers ab aboard. Now, as for the captain, 
Captain Yi jung Seok, who was one of the first people to escape the doomed ferry, authorities are still looking into charging him with what something's called a murder by omission. Now, murder by omission is pursued when death is caused by inaction on the part of the defendant. Now, Liam, prosecutors are also cracking down on the on the operator of the ferry, the uh, Cheonghaejin Marine Company. Uh, tell us more about that. That's right, Kanyang. Prosecutors seem to think that the fundamental reason behind the sinking of the ferry could lie with its operator, which faces allegations that it lobbied its way out of regular safety checkups. A joint investigation team is now looking through the documents collected from its raid of the offices and home of the company owner, Yu Byung On. The company's audit report last year showed that its entertainment expenses since 2001 had amounted to over 900,000 U.S. dollars. The prosecution is also looking to both the Cheonghaejin Marine Company and its affiliate Cheonghaeji to review how these expenses were used, with speculation again that some of it may have gone toward lobbying lawmakers to opt out of safety checks and also to increase their assets. Right, and we'll keep a close eye on that. Leanne, now, now the government is also launching a review of all disaster countermeasures. Uh, what's the latest there? That's right. The Disaster Control Tower has announced plans to review its disaster countermeasure manual, manuals in all ministries. As you may remember, the Coast Guard and the government were criticized for their slow response to the accident, raising speculation that the emergency procedure and command chain failed to operate properly. Now, during a ministerial level meeting Thursday, Prime Minister Chung Hong Won said a safety innovation master plan should be made. He suggested private safety personnel be consulted to come up with a practical plan. This comes after President Park Geun-hye called for the review of the entire disaster and emergency response systems. Now, the Maritime Ministry has also announced that it will revise related laws to revoke a crew member's license if a ferry accident leads to any deaths. There's also new legislation that has been introduced that would make it illegal for captains without first-class sailing licenses to sail vessels weighing more than 6,000 tons. The sailed of came in at nearly 7,000 tons. The captain of the sailed of ferry, Lee jun Suk, holds a second-class sailing license, which is allowed under current regulations. I'll, I'll bring you more updates in our later newscasts. Now, there wasn't just one factor that caused the sinking. Multiple factors were in play, obviously. Uh, but experts in Japan say there were at least two chances to stop the ferry from sinking. Our Song ji -sun has the details. Japanese marine experts say the first window of opportunity that could have prevented a sinking happened the moment a Sewara ferry entered waters around Chindo Island, well known for its strong currents. They say the crew should have factored in the strong currents and made sure cargo that shifted was moved back into its original position to rebalance the vessel as soon as they realized something was wrong. It would have been more helpful if they dumped the falling containers into the sea as that could have helped the ship rebalance itself, even up to the point the ferry could have made it to Jeju Island. The second chance was after when the ferry changed direction and lost its balance as its heavy cargo slid to one side. The professor says the captain should have lowered both of the ship's anchors in the front and back, which could have helped the ship recover its balance. The current was flowing from the south, so if they have anchored the ship, the current would have stopped the vessel from listing, eventually pulling it back up straight. Japanese marine experts also point out that rescue operations should have been launched as soon as a passenger made the first emergency call. Operations only began after a crew member made contact a few critical minutes later. Japan has a rule that rescue helicopters have three minutes to arrive at the scene after receiving a distress call from a ship. Song ji -sun, Arirang News. Now on to general news. U.S. President Barack Obama is in Tokyo today on the first leg of a week-long trip to Asia. Following summit talks with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe earlier this Thursday, the U.S. president made comments that are sure to catch the attention of China. Our Kim Ji-yeon reports.
During his eight day four nation tour of Asia, U.S. President Barack Obama is trying to reaffirm America's commitment to its allies on the other side of the Pacific. In Japan, Obama set out to convince Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe that he can deliver on his security and economic pledges with an existing defense treaty between the two countries taking center stage. The current language requires the U.S. to come to Japan's defense if the country is attacked. After a summit talks with Abe, Obama said Thursday that the treaty extends to the disputed island chain known as Senkaku in Japan or Diaoi in China. This means that if a conflict were to take place on the islands, the U.S. would be obliged to respond. This is the first time the U.S. president has sided with Tokyo on this sensitive issue, which is sure to upset Beijing. The two leaders also held discussions on a Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement, but failed to come to an agreement. They pledged to continue to exchange views on the matter. After finishing up in Tokyo, Obama will come to Seoul while he will meet with President Bakane on Friday. He is to express his sympathy to the victims of the South Korean ferry disaster. The two leaders will also talk over ways to respond to the North Korea threat, particularly with the possibility of a fourth nuclear test from Pyongyang looming. President Obama is also expected to express his support to President Buck's vision on reunification of the two Koreas. In a speech in Dresden last month, she urged the North to expand reunions of families separated by the Korean War and increase cross-border economic and cultural exchanges, which include the South bolstering humanitarian aid. It will be Obama's fourth visit to South Korea, which represents the most trips to the nation by a sitting U.S. president. After departing from Seoul, Obama will head to Malaysia and the Philippines. Kim Jeon, Arirang News. Meanwhile, new satellite imagery suggests that North Korea has completed expansion of a centrifuge facility at its Yongbyon nuclear site and could now be installing equipment or even centrifuges inside. Now, this is according to an analysis of satellite images by the Institute for Science and International Security, which reported last August that North Korea had doubled the size of its gas centrifuge plant at the complex. Well, images taken in early April show no significant alterations have been made to the centrifuge building, suggesting North Korea could now be concentrating on setting up equipment inside. The imagery also shows water being discharged near a 5-megawatt electric reactor at the site in April, suggesting the reactor is likely up and running. Shifting our focus now to the economy, Korea's gross domestic product grew at the fastest pace in three years in the first quarter of this year. Central bank officials say the latest figures confirm that the nation is on a recovery track. Sun jung has more. The Bank of Korea said Thursday that the country's real GDP grew 3.9 percent in the January to March period from a year earlier, spurred by strong exports and expanding private spending. This quarterly growth is the fastest on-year gain since the first quarter of 2011. Compared to the previous three months, the economy was up 0.9 percent, maintaining its growth of around 1 percent for the third consecutive quarter. The bank said the expansion was helped by steady growth in exports, which gained 1.7 percent from the previous quarter. Among other factors contributing to the recovery were a surge in research and development activities and a gain in investment in the construction sector. Central bank officials said the first quarter growth signaled the Korean economy is returning to its normal growth track. Director General of the Bank of Korea's Economic Statistics Division, Chong Young Tech, said if this pace of quarterly growth continues, the country would be on track for an annual 4 percent growth for 2014. Earlier this month, the central bank upwardly revised this year's growth forecast to 4 percent from 3.8 percent. Chung, however, added that a variant would be economic impacts from last week's tragic sinking of the Sewaro ferry, particularly on consumer sentiment. Son Jung-in, Arirang News.
And that's all for me at this hour. Our study coverage on the nation's search and rescue efforts in Korea's ferry disaster continues right here on Arirang News. Join us again at the top of the next hour.